an old admonition is engraved here. Let no one ignorant of geometry or the irrational numbers enter. 37 told me you are the integers. She's the genius kissed by the god of truth. She can see our numbers and has never made a mistake. But I don't understand. Why would you break the silence at the meeting? I apologize, Miss Sophia. I won't defend our behavior. You may save that apology for later. If you can persuade more than half of the people to vote for your friend's commutation, perhaps she won't be sentenced to death. I have gathered some case files from the past. I hope it will be of some help. These files are... But won't you be in trouble for helping us? I have my own reasons. Integers are the living example of virtues, the standard of purification. It represents a soul existing in the world of forms, a true being. It is the floating points behind the decimal which dent the process of our overall purification. The evil. The ones who violate rules knowingly. The ones who turn a positive number into negatives. And a civil person a criminal. If integers like you would lose your life over some unintentional mistakes, wouldn't it be a great shame? Besides, I can't stand the idea of you being killed in front of me. Not rigorous. One thing, we still don't know Virgin and Sonetto's numbers. For another, the fact that every crow we've seen is black doesn't necessarily entail that the next crow will also be black. Even if every virtuous person we met has been an integer, we can't be certain that the next one will still be an integer. Same case for irrational numbers. You're right, 37. But people always tend to believe that virtuous people are integers. That is what we call belief. Correct. But not entirely correct. Everyone can make mistakes. Numbers are just numbers. They are not associated with virtues. Unlike me, you're always right, 37. I don't know what differs us. Will you be at the assembly? Yes. Then I will leave them with you. I, I'm not qualified to set foot in the Hall of Truth. I have done poorly in receiving the guests. I will ask Six for my punishment after the assembly. Huh? So you... are not coming back to my laboratory? Neither will you help me review the calculation results or sort out the books? The scripture shall not be challenged. What's more, any students here can help you in the laboratory. It doesn't have to be me. Had I known, I would have let someone else welcome Virtin and her friends. Like 210, he loves to brag to young ladies so much that he would take the punishment willingly, right? 
you were that someone else who was assigned to receive them in the first place. If I hadn't stopped you in time, how much longer would Regulus's head have stayed in your mouth? Not to mention what happened last time, and the time before that. But, the fact that I have messed up all the receptions before doesn't mean I may excel in the next one. The chances of messing up the first reception and the hundredth reception are the same. Whatever you say, you little sophist. Everyone says so. But compliments won't help her find her number. So, Vertin, are you ready for the debate? Does that mean you will help us? Of course. I don't want to miss the chance. What chance? The chance to see your numbers. There's no greater knowledge than the knowledge of oneself. And there's no more exciting truth than the truth of oneself. I can quickly tell which types of numbers you are, but it requires proof to know the exact number of your soul. I want to know the answer before you see your own numbers. So it's 37 who proves it, not 13. I'd be glad to give this chance to you. That's boring. Ah, <sighs> let's go, Vertin. The assembly's about to start. I once won a public debate of a similar nature. This is my duty. I won't let it get in the way of the team's investigation. Senator. By our tradition, Miss Sonetto will be given the poisoned wine, so she will be muted and stay that way forever. However, Sophia raised her objection against the decision. After giving the matter some discreet thought, I have decided it is necessary to hold an assembly and take care of it democratically. Those of you who agree to the death sentence may remain seated. Those of you who wish to commute Miss Sonetto's punishment Please put your pebble into the pot in the middle of the hall. Now, Miss Aneto, Miss Vertin, you may defend yourselves. Until the sand in this hourglass falls to the bottom. I am Sonetto from St. Pavla Foundation. I wish all the honorable audiences here would lend me their ears to hear my defense as a humanitarian gesture. What number are you? Defendant, the court requires an answer. What is your number? What? 
Me? No, I don't have a number. Don't waste our time. People without a number cannot stand in the Hall of Truth. All her words are void. Sentence her to death now! Forty-two's argument is valid. Defenders, what do you wish to contend? What? It's valid? I... Objection! The last time we inflicted severe punishment was in 1980 to a visitor who ate beans. He ate a carbuncle that feeds on beans. And he was sentenced to death according to the set theory. In our scripture, eating beans is the most evil sin, which undoubtedly fits the most severe punishment. But if we are now executing people for breaking the silence at the assembly, how would it reflect our attitude towards the consumption of beans? Has the latter become less sinful? I suggest Neto's punishment to be commuted. A good argument. 37's argument is deemed valid. The debate will continue. Objection. The punishment for eating beans is to throw the offenders into the Gorgon current, while the punishment for the silence breaker is to drink poisoned wine. Among all the punishments we have, there's no other punishment more dreadful than being thrown into the Gorgon current. Because eternity and infinity are the two things we have the least knowledge of which makes them the most ghastly punishments among all. Giving her the poisoned wine doesn't make the consumption of beans less sinful. Her argument is invalid. Objection! Both of the crimes would fall into the same category if we are taking the punishment as a frame of reference, which is death. Objection! The two crimes in question are not commensurable, which makes your comparison invalid. Oh, what's this? I'm completely lost in this irrational debate. I... I see. So that's how it works. Timekeeper? Relax. I will help you. I'd like to start by quoting 42's first argument. People without a number cannot stand in the Hall of Truth. In that case, it's not possible for Sonetto to commit a crime in the Hall of Truth. Because she can't even be in the Hall. What? Good point, Virgin. This is our chance to out-argue them. Sempre caro mi fu questo cole. These are merely clumsy sophists. We've all seen her break the maxim. Objection! What you see cannot be submitted to the court as a transcendental fact. It's nothing but the fragments of the phenomenal world which can't be used in your argument. 
Objection sustained. Please, ladies and gentlemen, keep the debate logically consistent. Since Sonato has no number, and a person without a number does not exist before the truth, Sonato thus didn't offend your truth. She didn't break any rules. Sempre caro mi su quest'erba cole. Objection! The rule breaker has a number. We can all tell that she is very likely an integer. Therefore, she should be identified as an unknown number, not void. Your sophism has failed. 42's argument is held valid. Is there anything else you'd like to add, defendant? Uh, tell you a secret, Thirteen. We would call criminals negative numbers. I got it! Sempre caro mi su quest'erba cole. It is easy to prove Sonetto's innocence. According to the law of the excluded middle, Sonetto either committed a sin or committed no sin. The two statements cannot be both false at the same time. Since we consider a criminal as a negative number and a non-criminal as a positive number, Sonetto at present is considered an unknown number. That means she doesn't belong to the criminal set or the non-criminal set. She did not commit a sin and did not commit no sin. It's a paradox. I hereby demand to modify the criminal sentence that has been given to Sonetto. The law of excluded middle. A good sophism. Good for you to create a paradox from one sentence of my argument. But pitifully, you've made a fatal mistake. You've taken my argument as the basis of your defense. I said people without a number should be expelled from the Hall of Truth. You don't have a number either, Miss Outsider. Based on my argument, which has also been approved by you, I argue that all your arguments are invalid. <gasps> There's no time left. Thirteen has a number. I saw it. What? Thirty-seven, do you know what you're saying? Yeah. I read her number, just now. Thirteen's number is zero. Thirty-seven. You just said Vertin's number is zero. Do you know what it means? Very clearly. Would you be able to submit proof to a payron? No problem. Half of you in this hall have put in the pebbles. If Thirty-seven's argument is found to be true, Every argument Vertin has spoken in Sonetto's defense will be deemed valid. Sonetto will be exempt from the punishment. I will announce the result once 37's proof has been validated by a Peron. Thank you for your time. Timekeeper, I am so sorry. I tried my best, but still I couldn't understand the debate. I failed again.
like, what happened to her? Come here, little girl. We need to move her outside. Lie her down on the ground and wipe her palm and feet with dew and peppermint oil. <sighs> that would be okay. Thank you. You're welcome, the distinguished number zero. I'm kidding. I'm 210. Well, instead of the number, I prefer people call me the rhetorician. I've heard your preachment. Pretty demagogic. That's how logic works. With logic, I can prove that you'd cease to exist in the next moment, or that there are no other people in this world except me. Achilles can never outrun a tortoise, and a flying arrow is forever motionless. This debate is nothing but meaningless wordplay. That pacifist let you off this time. Six. <laughs> a perfect number indeed. For he knows the benefit of reconciliation. Who wants to have blood on their hands and be devoured by the cycle of hatred? Yet it's a torture for any intelligent mind to hear such an immature debate. Can you feel the suffering of our leader now? I'm sorry. No apology needed, Miss Outsider. I also feel sorry for your pain. Given that 37 has revealed your number. What do you mean? 37. Our evil little genius. The most cunning star of Hermes. She's been having fun revealing others' numbers for a long time. Our numbers are our essence. And it's also the most important proof we get once in our lifetime. But she enjoys taking that opportunity away from you. Just because her talent allows her to do so. She did that to her friend, too. She found out Sophia's number. But without casting an eye on that paper with her number on it, Sophia threw it into the sea. Sophia is Sophos. But you... I pity you. It doesn't seem like trouble to me. Alas, poor little Virton. You still don't understand. The number of our souls suggests our fate. It might be changed through algorithms temporarily swirling, shifting, or transforming alongside other changes occurring on the coordinate axis. But in the end, we can only be ourselves. One is thought. Two is opinion. Three is wisdom. Four is strength. Five, enthusiasm. Six, harmony. Seven, order. Eight, philanthropy. Nine is restraint while ten is completion. Zero, however, is in the middle of the axis, the origin of the frame of reference. It's neither positive nor negative, neither prime nor composite. Things are ever-changing, but you stay the same. Your loneliness also lasts forever. <gasps> this is your fate. Being exposed in full view of the crowd, yet you know nothing about it. 37 was acting on impulse, yet she opened Pandora's box. She leisurely reveals your fate. That carefree behavior makes no difference to picking up a shell on a beach. How could I not pity you? Miss Verton. Thirty-seven's proof has passed the review. Your friend will now be exempt from the punishment for violating the rules. However, she has to take some catch-up lessons on the scripture. Please, 
Meet me at the hall tomorrow at noon. I would have words with you. Before this negotiation begins, I wish to tell an allegory to the two of you. A group of people were imprisoned in a cave. Behind them, there was a fire. Before them was a tall, solid wall. Their legs and necks were chained and fixed so they were constrained to look nowhere but to gaze at the wall in front of them. When they dropped their eyes, they saw their own body. When they looked up, the flickering light of the fire fell over them, and they only saw the shadows of what was passing behind them. No one had lived one day outside the cave. The shadows cast on the wall all there was to be perceived as reality. They had no knowledge of the real world. One day, one of them escaped from the cave, walked into the light, and saw the true world with his own eyes for the first time. Everything he saw or felt in the cave was nothing more than a mere shadow of the object's true form. Our world is a poor one, Miss Verton. The phenomenal world is the cave in this allegory, where we are surrounded by shadows or some humble fractions of the truth. It is ugly, frivolous, filthy, perishable, subject to decay, and filled with hollow desires and meaningless struggles. Only the wise can walk out of that cave and see the world as it truly is. In that eternal, transcendent world, everything is in its most perfect form. I pray that you, Miss Verton, the representative of St. Pavlov Foundation, and you, Miss Arcana, her counterpart of Manus Vindicte, would pay heed to my words. Everything you've been fighting each other for means no more than some fragments of phenomena to us. There's only one thing worth doing. That is, to seek higher wisdom, develop one's virtue, and achieve greatness in life. We have never set foot on the soil dampened by the storm, nor have we ever been involved in the disputes brought by the torrents of time. I beg you, do not take your conflict in the phenomenal world into the realm of truth. For certain. It was never my intention to sully the Sanctuary of Truth. Then, to prevent a situation like this from happening again, I would like to ask you two to carve your names on these two stone bangles and drip a drop of your blood on each of them. Once the bracelet is put on, no one will be able to remove it. From now on, as long as you're on this island, None of your people will draw blood from one another. Or the bangle shall draw all the blood from you. The peace agreement is so decided. I appreciate that. I'll sign it. <laughs> the 
peace agreement. Lady Vertin, we meet again. I wish the best to thy friend. She's doing well, thanks to you. <laughs> You're most welcome. Thou shalt quench, for times hath changed. I would not wish to shed even a drop of Arcanist's blood in vain. But Schneider should be the victim of a merciless bullet? <laughs> Pardon, my pitiful child. Did you forget? That merciless bullet cameth from a gun never belonging to me. <gasps> What's Manus Vindicte's purpose to be here? Hearken the archaic wisdom. Just as thou doest. <laughs> I am not surprised. I adore thy visage, Lady Verton, emotionless in the storm. Alas, no man shall bravest the storm and live. Including thee. A wooden box in the Elitiaus base has my name on it. Was that your doing? Sadly, it wasn't. I hope thee findeth the answer satisfactory. Burning. Is that Miss Arcana? Miss Arcana, please, don't go! Save us! And save us! Congratulations, Miss Sonetto. You are the fastest learner of our doctrine among all the visitors in the past half century. On behalf of all our writers, I award you this laurel wreath. No, no, I wouldn't have achieved this without your guidance. Those mathematic statements are really inspiring. I've learned a lot. But there's still something confusing me such as Pythagoras and his golden thigh, his memory of the previous lifetimes as the son of Hermes, and the transmigration for every 216 years. Could you please tell me more about these? Hmm. Why would people fail to see the charm of the matrices? This is not right. I need to spend more time on teaching. Anyone! Anyone! Save, save us! 
Thus my journey of art is doomed to fail. I really don't want to study maths anymore. Hell. Timekeeper, you are here. I heard that you completed all the lessons on the scripture. This laurel wreath suits you well. Timekeeper, I'm sorry. At the assembly, I failed to understand the Arcanist's logic. It was totally different to the debates I have participated in. But now I have... That was not your fault, Zanetto. It is now behind us. I need to tell you something more important. I've signed a peace agreement with Arcana, and the price of breaking it is... death. What? So Manus Vindicte is also restrained by the stone bangle like we are. Yes. She put it on without hesitation. But I don't think her purpose would be as simple as hearkening the ancient wisdom. I attacked Manus' followers earlier as 37 asked me to. But I received no punishment from the Bangle. Perhaps this island makes its own judgement on what to be classified as hostility. Like it has a mind of its own. Sonato, do not report this to the headquarters before we figure out how the Bangle works. After all, there are many other things to investigate on this island other than Manus Vindicte. I see. I will contact Miss Druvis and Miss Moiselle first and keep an eye on Arcana. Timekeeper, this island, the Manus's mask, and your suitcase are all immune to the storm. Does this mean we could collect more asymmetrical nuclide R samples? I tried to collect some samples last night in the outer region of the island. But the detecting device showed nothing. If we were to find out more, we have to go to the center area. What are you conspiring now? <gasps> do not poke the fire with swords, and do not jump over a crossbar. The assembly will not be held every time when there's a crime. Please take heed of my warning and do not overstep the line. Learn a lesson from them. <gasps> Lilia! Didn't you say you have Regulus with you safely? <coughs> Apologies, Vertin. I was going to rescue Sonetto through a very creative underground tunnel. But things didn't quite go as planned. <coughs> Not a bad innovation for a simple clap on the forehead. If only you didn't miscalculate the location of the explosion. <sighs> this apple is grateful that it didn't get blasted into a puddle of apple jam. Warning. Shell cleaning required. Warning. Oh, I don't know why, but when I was in that cave, ideas kept flooding into my head. Though, judging by the outcome, they weren't all good ideas. <sighs> On a routine patrol, I found them trying to break into the cave. I'm not surprised that an irrational number would try to trespass on forbidden grounds. But you two? The integer and the fraction? What were you doing with her? This is a serious crime. <sighs> Do 
we have to go through this debate again. It's... it's okay, Timekeeper. I will defend Regulus. I've thoroughly studied the scripture, and this time I'm sure I can do better. <sighs> Forget it. Forget it. It is unwise to waste time trying to understand an irrational number's motive. Besides, we should let the Reckless take care of the least important matters. That's it. Regulus, you will come with me to clean the beach. Huh? Me? Again? Since you have too many floating points, words of discipline would not work on you. We would have suggested you study with the rest of the students here. Abstain from eating meat, bathe in cold water, rise with the Apollo star, study our doctrine, read the scripture aloud on the beach, so as to remove your floating points and purify your soul. What? I won't do any of that. But taking your peculiar character into consideration... I decided that some compulsory labor would be the better option. Oh, that's the best news of the day. I'd rather clean up the rubbish on the beach than be surrounded by people giving sermons all the time. At least the rubbish doesn't talk gibberish. I'd be dead if you didn't change your mind. Regulus, studying the scripture is not that scary. They will teach you and guide you until you take full command. Just like... taking lessons at school. Huh? Is that what schools are like? Haven't you been to a school, Regulus? Haha! <laughs> a great pirate would not remember trivial matters as such. So, where were we? Which part of the beach needs to be taken care of by the great captain? My laboratory. Whoa! Where did you pop up from? Thirty-seven. Aren't you supposed to preach to the visitors? I've seen their numbers. A grip of negative repeating infinite decimals. They will achieve nothing but to repeatedly step in the river of mistakes. I gave up on them. Fine. Those of you who are complicit in breaking into the cave will also be sent to labor. Sonetto and Lilia will come with me to patrol. Regulus, you can go clean the lab. As for Verton, you will assist 37 with her study of the emanation. Don't waste more time on the trivial matters of the phenomenal world, integers. That was the sole reason you were on this island, was it not? Don't let down your guard. The Arcanists on this island are not as easy to deal with as you imagined. Down in the cave, I heard some pretty alluring and intriguing anecdotes. Miss Lilia, this way. You will cover this area. Stay on the radio. Don't worry, Timekeeper. Lilia and I will keep an eye on Manus Vindicte. We are counting on you, Sonetto. I have a feeling... We are coming closer to a big secret. 